Samuel Powell is a West Africa analyst at Oxford Analytica. He joins me on the programme. Thanks for speaking to us today, sir. What's your best understanding of who is currently in charge in Gabon? Right. Uh, thanks for having me on the programme. Uh, at the moment, it seems like the head of the Republican Guard, Luis Urigi Guema, is, is probably the president. Uh, he did say in an interview that they haven't yet decided who the president is going to be, but uh, as the highest ranking officer who is involved in the coup, it seems, and again, there's a lot of patchy reporting about this, so it's really hard to know what the details are. It seems like he may take the, the head spot in whatever junta is, is created at the, uh, at the end of all of this. Um, yes, the army then clearly have seized power here. But I'm wondering about the timing, because the Bongo family have ruled Gabon for over 50 years. Why do you think the army decided now's the time for action and not, say, after the election in 2016, where there were also allegations of significant corruption? Sure. I think there's uh, there are parts of that question that are very difficult to answer. But what one can say is, first of all, there has been a recent history of coup attempts, right? In 2019, there was a coup attempt uh, that was relatively quickly put down. Uh, some soldiers seized a radio studio and called upon the population to, to rise up and didn't happen. Um, this, uh, this particular coup occurred literally minutes after the announcement of election results, which happened at four o'clock in the morning, uh, where Bongo was, was uh, announced that he had won the election with 67% of the vote. Um, there were already allegations of massive rigging in the days leading up to the announcement. The election was actually on August 26th. Since then, there was no, there's, there hasn't been any internet. Uh, international media, including France 24, was, was banned from broadcasting in the country. Um, there were uh, results, there were, there were initial results that began appearing in the international media that suggested the opposition may have actually been in the lead. Uh, and this may or may not have been the trigger for the, the military to step in once the results were called for Bongo. Uh, what is true is that in 2016, Bongo's re-election uh, was almost certainly massively rigged. Uh, given the closeness of the official numbers and the very strange numbers that appeared out of a lot of polling stations, including over 100% participation in some areas that are, that are Bongo strongholds, um, which suggests, which then led to massive protests, which which led to, to deaths as well um, with the repression of those protests. So, I think there's already an expectation among much of the population, particularly in urban areas where the bongos are very unpopular, that this election would not be legitimate anyway. So, when the uh, announcement came, uh, this was a perfect pretext or opportunity, or perhaps they were genuinely motivated by democratic motives. For the hunter to, or for the military to step in and uh, and oust uh, Ali Bongo, uh, it's it's un yeah sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you a bit about the broader regional context here because as we've been talking about all day, this is the eighth coup now in Africa in the past three years, and it was just one month ago that there was that coup in Niger. Now after that, the West African bloc ECOWAS considered intervening militarily. It didn't in the end, but. Is this precisely what ECOWAS had feared, that a coup in one country would embolden leaders in another? Certainly. And I would say the ECOWAS intervention has not happened yet, but it is still on the table. Mm. Um, but uh, Gabon is not part of ECOWAS. Gabon is part of a different regional organization and it's part of a, a, a different part of the continent. And while I'm almost certain that the junta leaders probably took inspiration from the wave of coups which have afflicted West Africa, uh, the actual motivations would have been uh, specific to Gabon. And what the influence that came from the outside may have been the extent to which the coup plotters believe they might get away with this, um, both regionally and internationally. And in that sense, they're probably justified in believing that. Can I ask you what you made of the fact that Ali Bongo in that video clip we paid a sh played a short while ago spoke in English rather than in French? Is that a sign he's trying to reach sort of beyond his historic ally in France? Certainly. Um, well, Gabon is the latest member of the Commonwealth, and that was that's been part of Gabon's strategy. Is, is part of Gabon's or Bongo's in particular international strategy to multiply its international partnerships. So it became a member of the Commonwealth. Uh, I want to say two years ago, three years ago, and uh, so by speaking in English, he's reaching out to his, you know by Gabon's international partners who are in the English in the English speaking world, but also to Gabon's other partners like China, um, which is 
Gabon's largest investor, uh, even though it's not an English-speaking country, that is the medium of, of communication between uh, Gabonese and, and Chinese officials. So I think it's it's a way of, it's really, ob it's really directed towards uh, an international audience and asking for pressure to be put on the junta to step down and relinquish control back to Bongo. That's really interesting. Just a final thought from you, sir. Um, we've been looking at images of people celebrating in the streets of Libreville today. Is it too early to know how much support the coup leaders have in the country? Yes and no. We know that Bongo was very unpopular, especially in Libreville and uh, Projonti and some other urban areas. What we don't know is the extent to, to which this popular support can last. Um, you know, juntas have a tendency to uh, try to stay in power <laughs> despite promises to transition to civilian rule. Not all of them do, but many do. Uh, those who took power, including uh, including Oligui Guema, have were close to the Bongo clan before and are linked to corruption cases. So it's it, this may simply be a case of, you know, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. And if that's the case, then they will quickly lose popular support. All right. Really interesting. Thanks for your analysis.